Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Now, as preppers, we tend to accumulate a lot of gear. Sometimes we start off with something cheap and then we upgrade as we're able to, or maybe it just takes us a little while to find what we like. Just because we move on to something a little bit different, that doesn't necessarily mean that our older gear is completely worthless. Rather than getting rid of our old gear or just let it collect dust, you could use it to build up a backup survival kit. And I call a kit like this a better than nothing kit. It's not gonna have your best stuff in it, but what you do have in there should be able to at least do the job. A kit like this would be good to keep in something like a car or a hunting cabin since it should give you some basic functionality, but if it gets stolen or lost, it's not going to be the end of the world because it doesn't really have anything all that expensive in there. It'll also allow you to keep your best gear in more critical or frontline survival kits like get home bags or bug out bags. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to be using some of my second tier survival items along with a few like cheaper things that I've picked up specifically for this video, and I'll be keeping everything in this ammo can that I can fit underneath the back seat of my truck. And I think with any survival kit, it's always a good idea to incorporate as many of the 10 C's of survival in it as possible. The first one being a cutting tool. This is one of Mora's least expensive knives. I think this one was around $10 when I got it. And because of that, it's not really going to be the most refined. For example, I wasn't even able to spark a ferro rod with the spine, but after a few minutes with a file and a sharpening stone on the back of it, I was able to do that. And also, this is going to be plenty sharp, just like any Mora. Having it in this kit will allow me to keep better options like my BK-16 and BK-2 and things like my Get Home Bag or Bug Out Bag. I'm also going to keep a pocket chainsaw in this kit. These are around $20. They're made from what looks like actual chainsaw chain. And they do a really good job cutting larger pieces of wood. They're also a much better option than some of those cheapy little wire commando saws that you find in just little... Econo line survival kits or for five dollars at your local sporting goods store. You could also keep an inexpensive folding saw in a kit like this. I have both the Baco Laplander and a Corona folding saw. Both of them are excellent tools but they cost around twenty five or thirty dollars each. And while every good survival kit should have a multi-tool in it, I only have one really good one and that's my Swiss tool which stays in my get home bag. So for this kit, I added a set of fencing pliers that I picked up for another video. These were designed specifically to cut through thick wires like barbed wire, and these will actually do better with that than something like a pliers based multi-tool. Having this Victorinox Ranger in the kit will give me a couple extra blades along with some basic tools like screwdrivers. And you can also put a small glasses repair screwdriver in the corkscrew to help you make repairs on those if you need them. The next group of items in this kit are combustion devices. And the first one is just a simple Bic lighter. These do a lot better in storage than things like Zippos because their fuel doesn't evaporate. So, I mean, for a kit like this, they're a pretty solid, reliable choice. But, of course, they're not foolproof, so I included this ferro rod as well. This one's by Bayide, and I also have one of their 6 inch by half inch ferro rods that I keep with my bottle cook set. And, I mean, they're just cheap, decent ferro rods. I've also included a bag of Vaseline cotton balls to help make sure that I can get a fire started no matter what. And I'm sure that most of y'all have seen these. If you haven't, they're very easy to make. You can just take some cotton balls and a glob of Vaseline, put them in a bag, kind of mix it all up. When you need them, take them out kind of spread out those fibers, get Vaseline all over them. Very easy to light and they burn for a while. Another thing that I added to this kit is an Esbit Ultralight Pocket Stove. It can be used to boil water and heat up food if needed. And I showed in a previous video that this isn't my favorite off-grid cooking method, but it is very well suited for a kit like this because the fuel tablets are so stable. They aren't going to be affected by temperature variations like what will be experienced inside of a car during, you know, winter and summer. And you also don't have to worry about them leaking like you would with things like alcohol or propane. The tablets also don't take up a whole lot of room because they can fit inside of the stove itself and it just folds right up. Now you can use natural materials with these if you need to, but it would probably be easier to do if you had one of their bigger stoves 
just so you can fit more than just a couple of small twigs on it. Now when boiling water or cooking, you are going to need some sort of metal container. I use a clean canteen with my get home bag and I keep a Pathfinder bottle cook set in my bug out bag. And since I already have some nicer options, I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of money for this particular kit. So I just went and I picked up this little cheap $6 camping cup along with a cheap Nalgene knockoff water bottle. But you could also use a military style canteen and canteen cup for this purpose as well. And while a steel water bottle is definitely a better option, this will still do the job and this little camping cup's actually going to fit on the Esbit stove better than my skinny clean canteen would. But it's important to understand that there may be times where you don't want to boil water. Maybe you don't have time to do it or the situation itself would maybe make it unsafe to do so. Because of that, I like to include Grail purifier bottles in my main kits. They remove pretty much anything that you may need them to and they're fast and easy to use, but they're probably a little bit too expensive to keep in a backup kit like this one. But a good alternative to those that's a whole lot less expensive is the Life Straw. These have been around for a really long time now and they're an easy way to drink from a natural source. One downside is that it's a little bit too long to fit in the bottle that I have, but a Sawyer Mini could and it's about the same price and has similar capabilities to the Life Straw. And the Sawyer does have the added benefit of being able to accept bags or bottles with the appropriate threads. Now just be aware that you cannot expose filters like these to freezing temperatures once they've been used and also I'm not really sure how well they'll hold up to higher temperatures like if you keep these in your car during the summer. So those are just some things to think about. And as a final backup I've also included some water purification tablets and these go really well with bottles like the one that I have since there's measurements on the side that's always helpful when you're dealing with some sort of chemical treatment method. For cover, I chose this heavy-duty Mylar blanket by Survive Outdoors Longer, and this is what I kept in my get-home bag before I picked up the Survival Bibby shown here. This blanket is a little bit thicker than a lot of other Mylar blankets that you'll find, so that makes it a little bit more well-suited for making things like shelters. Now, if you're using this as part of a vehicle kit, then it wouldn't hurt to keep other things in there as well, like you could have a military-style poncho with grommets along with maybe a wool blanket. During winter months, you may also want to keep something like this candle lantern in your vehicle. It's not going to be as effective as something like a heater would be, but it might kind of help take the edge off the cold if you're, for some reason, stranded in your vehicle in a snowstorm. The next thing that I included in this kit is cordage and for that I chose some paracord that I picked up for a previous video. Now while I'll probably be using survivor cord in my main kits, regular paracord is still a solid option. It's strong enough to handle pretty much any task that you could reasonably expect to do in a survival situation and it can be broken down if needed. Individual strands can be used as thread for smaller jobs like making repairs and gear. But to make those repairs, you're going to need a sewing needle. And for this, I have a canvas sail needle, which is going to be strong enough to go through the thicker materials that you would find in things like backpacks or sleeping bags. Another good thing about them is that their eye is large enough to accept a single inner strand from paracord. And what I've done for this is that I've wrapped it in some duct tape just because I didn't want it to poke me while I was digging around inside of the kit. And also it does make it a little bit easier to find. And while you can use paracord as thread, you may want to go ahead and put some dedicated thread and some other sewing supplies in a kit like this as well. I've also included a cotton bandana, which has a ton of survival uses. These can include things like creating bandages and dressings. You can use it as a pre-filter along with many, many more. I have this nicer survival bandana in my get home bag, but this one is just something cheap that I picked up locally and it should do the job for a kit like this. The next thing that I put in here is duct tape and like a bandana, it has several survival uses. But since I didn't want an entire roll of duct tape to take up a ton of room inside of here, I just trimmed down a pencil to about the width of a roll of duct tape and then rolled several feet of duct tape onto that pencil, so now I have sort of a mini roll. This is a small compass that I've had for a while, and it wasn't expensive at all. I think when I got it, it was less than $10, but it does still point north, which is always a good thing when you're dealing with a compass. I've also added this Texas road map, and while I'm very familiar with my local area, I've lived here my entire life, I do still travel around the state occasionally and having a road map could be beneficial if there's some sort of situation where the grid goes down, cellular networks go with it, and 
I lose access to my maps. And I may also go ahead and pick up some city maps for places like Dallas or Houston, since just a regular state road map like this one may not have all the details that I would need if I was in a city like that. The last of the 10 C's is a candling device, and for this you can choose either a flashlight or headlamp, but if you can only have one, I would recommend a headlamp just because they allow you to work hands-free. This is one that I picked up for around 10 or 15 bucks, but if you can afford to spend a little bit more, then a headlamp that can double as a right angle flashlight will give you a little bit more functionality. Now, when it comes to food, you may want to keep some sort of energy bar in your kits. They don't require any sort of preparation and you can eat them on the move. And for water, these emergency water bags are good, but I would recommend keeping them outside of the kit in something like their own Ziploc bag in case one of them bursts, it won't ruin everything inside. Silcock keys are good to include if you're in an urban environment because you can use that to scavenge water from the outside of commercial buildings. And it's always a good idea to include some medical items in kits like these just because you never know when you're going to have to deal with some minor injury. And of course, there's many other things that you may want to include in a kit like this, and you may prefer to use some sort of backpack or shoulder bag instead of an ammo can. The main purpose of this was to just get people thinking about how to use stuff that they already have lying around that maybe isn't really doing anything useful at the moment. So if you want to see some more inexpensive survival gear that you can include in kits like these or your other kits, then be sure to check out these videos. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.